Okay guys, so speaking of trees, I have a special book to read with you. It's all about the foods that come from trees and plants and other things on the earth. And I have my special helper, Zeddy, here to be a, an audience. Since you guys are all at your houses, he's going to help me with this book. Okay, say hi, Zeddy. Hi. Okay, Zeddy, come sit right here. This book is called Seed, Soil, Sun. Earth's Recipe for Food. The author is Chris Peterson. And all of the photographs in the book were taken by a guy named David Lundquist. Seed, Soil, Sun. A few seeds, a little soil, a ray of sunshine, a splash of rain, a breath of air. This is Earth's recipe for the food we eat. Look at all those seeds. Holy moly. Yeah, holy moly. Okay. Nearly all of our food comes from seeds planted in the soil, moistened by the rain and warmed by the sun. Tomatoes, potatoes, peppers, and peas all begin as tiny seeds. Apples, pineapples, melons, and mangoes start with seeds too. In fact, almost all plants on earth grow from seeds. Which one is your favorite, Zeddy? Mm. Choose quick. Mm. Bananas. Ooh, bananas come from seeds. Okay. Each spring, farmers plant millions and millions of seeds in the soil. They wait for good rains and warm sunshine and then watch their fields turn into food for harvest in the fall. Some crops grow into food for people, and some are fed to animals. Then the animals provide us with milk, meat, eggs, and other products. More corn seeds are planted each year in the United States than any other kind of seed. Whether it's sweet corn in a backyard garden, field corn in a section of land that measures a mile across, or popcorn in a big bowl. It all begins with a little seed. Who likes popcorn? I don't. You don't like popcorn? Yeah. You do. <laughs> Zeddy likes popcorn. Do you guys like popcorn? I bet you do. Yeah, but I don't like corn. The beginning of a new plant is curled up inside each seed. Moisture from the rain filters down to the buried corn seed, softening its skin and causing it to swell and split open. Part of the seed, the root, there's the root, it grows down, down into the soil. And another part of the seed, the shoot, reaches for the sun. So there's the roots and there's the shoot, reaching up towards the sun. A corn seed doesn't seem like much, but look out! When it is placed in good soil and the sun shines and the rain falls, the seed germinates or sprouts. It only takes a few weeks for the sprout to turn into a giant corn plant with roots reaching down over six feet into the ground. Six feet is pretty big, so it, those roots go down in the ground. Um about as far as, like think how tall your mom and dad are, that's about how long those roots go down into the ground. Wow, there's that tiny seed, and there's the plant. And look, it's so big that they have to use a ladder to get up there. That's how tall the plants are. Soil is another ingredient needed to make food. This tiny layer of our earth is made of silt, sand, and clay, along with minerals, dead leaves, twigs, and a zillion tiny organisms. Each handful of soil contains more living things than all the human beings on earth. So think how many people we have on earth. A lot. Well, there's that many plus more living organisms in one handful of soil. So little bugs and all kinds of little stuff. What's your favorite insect, Zeddy? Mm. 
Is it a worm that lives in the soil? Wait, worms aren't insects. They don't have six legs. Um. Uh, What's your favorite insect? Honeybees. Honeybees. Ooh, they're important. Microscopic one-celled bacteria that munch away on dead leaves and insects in the soil are so minute that it would take a thousand of them lined up in a row to reach across the head of a pin. They use the energy stored in the leaves, roots, twigs, insects and recycle all those nutrients that feed corn. The earthy odor of rich soil is bacteria at work. So bacteria lives in the soil with all the insects and they can fit on the tiny tip of the head of that pin, a whole bunch of them. Can you see bacteria? No. Not usually, no, nope. not unless you had a microscope or something. Ooh, what are these guys? Worms. Earthworms, amoebas, mites, and moles also live in the soil. As they search for food, earthworms slither through the dirt, eating debris and discharging it as a rich natural fertilizer called castings. They leave behind an underground network of tunnels that allows air and water to filter in. The air and water help the plant roots breathe and grow. Has anyone ever touched a worm or maybe found one when they were digging in the dirt? I bet you guys have. Yeah, but I haven't. Betty says he has not found a worm before. I bet we'll find some this summer. Do you think? Yeah. The soil provides a home for the seed, but the seed only has enough energy inside it to push the new seedling out of the soil. Then the sun mm -hmm. takes over. Sunlight is a key ingredient in Earth's food recipe. Plants are the only living things that we can use the sun's energy to grow. There's the sun. There's the little baby seedling coming up out of the soil. It's ready to soak up that delightful sun and maybe some rain and some air. Plant leaves are nature's food factories. Cells within the leaves absorb energy from the sunlight. Carbon dioxide from the air and water through the plant's roots. Then these ingredients combine in a chemical reaction that creates sugar for the plant to grow and releases oxygen into the air for people to breathe. So these, so plants are providing food and clean air for us to breathe, guys, so we can stay alive. The way plants turn sunlight, water, and carbon dioxide into sugar is called photosynthesis. Can you guys say photosynthesis? Can you say it, Zeddy? No? But I like pumpkins Ooh. the most. Zeddy likes pumpkins a lot. Which one is your favorite? I like grapes. Yeah, Plants like, like, are really good at yeah, photosynthesis. Uh, yeah, yeah, I like grapes and strawberries and blueberries, actually. Mm. I bet you guys like berries, too. When um, plants make energy, they make more than they need, and they store the extra energy in their leaves, stems, flowers, fruits, roots, and seeds. All of our food from plants. So all that energy gets stored and then we eat it and we get energy for our bodies to move and learn and grow. When you eat lettuce, you are eating a leaf. When you eat celery, you're eating a stem. When you eat broccoli, you're eating flower buds. And when you eat apples or tomatoes, you are eating fruits. When you eat carrots, you're eating roots. When you eat sweet corn, you are eating seeds. When you drink milk from a cow, you are drinking a food made when the cow eats plants like grass, corn, and soybeans. What does the cow say? Moo. Moo. All these foods begin as seeds. The seed starts the plant. The soil feeds the plant. The sun, air, and rain combine to grow the plant into food. And as they grow, all of Earth's plants produce oxygen for us to breathe. Everybody take a big breath of oxygen. <gasps> Thank you, plants. 
When the plants are harvested, they provide food for the world and new seeds to begin the cycle once again. And that's the end. So, every time you guys take a bite of food, maybe it's a fruit or a vegetable, um, think about where it came from. Maybe, are you eating a leaf? Are you eating a stem? Are you eating some roots or maybe a flower like broccoli or cauliflower and also think about all of the wonderful elements of the earth that made your food grow like rain sunlight soil oxygen from the air wow our earth sure is special thank you earth bye guys